Unfortunately, it was only after I had prepared this slide and my lovely PowerPoint that I read the instructions that are given by TED to all speakers. And actually, there's only one thing they tell you about content, and that is never start with a statistic. I'm sticking to my guns, though, because this is a really important and interesting discovery. It's made here at Lancaster University by myself and someone I've been working with, Professor Bernard Silverman, a statistician. And it is proof, for the first time, that most religious people in this country are normal. Now, in most countries in the world, you wouldn't actually need to prove that. It wouldn't be an issue. Why is it here? Partly, there are lots of very loud atheist voices at the moment that tell us that most religious people are violent, fanatical, or just a bit nutty, or maybe all three. Also, I have to admit, religious leaders haven't helped. The leaders of Christian churches in this country have given us the impression that religious people are basically against everything. They're not keen on women's equality. Christians don't think women should be ordained bishops, nor do they think that same-sex marriage should be allowed. So we get this impression that they're very different from where the majority of us are. I've spent my whole career as a sociologist of religion looking at religious gatherings and meetings and talking to religious people. So I'm frustrated about this impression of the mad religious people. Just recently, I've been going around big cities in the UK with a fantastic photographer called Liz Hingley. And we've asked people to bring a special object with them, something that's spiritual, a spiritual object. And Liz takes her photo and I interview them and ask them why they brought that object. And they write in their own handwriting and in their own words what that object means to them. This is Raj. Raj is at school in Glasgow at the moment. Raj began by telling me that I'm not really very religious. He really loves Richard Dawkins. The problem with religious people, he says, is they don't base it on enough evidence, and they cause a lot of fights. So after our talk, I said to him at the end, but Raj, how come you've brought as your special object a picture of Ganesh, the Hindu god? And he said, well, I guess I'm a bit religious. I'm basically a Hindu, and I call on the gods when I need help. Life's hard, and I need guidance, and I want to keep out of police stuff. I often hear that in people of that age group, particularly young men, you know, a splitting off, as a psychologist might say, of the religious side of you, because it seems something a bit to be ashamed of. Not always with older people. Here is uh, uh, an older lady we interviewed in London, Gina. And Gina, I love this, she's got this sheaf of what she calls my epiphanies. Every time she's read something or heard something that has an epiphany means it opens up a whole new dimension of reality to you. That's what religion is, really. Every time she reads something like that, she writes it beautifully on these pieces of card. She's an artist, and she collects them all together, and she looks at them. So she's brought, she's fanned them out. Can you see? She's brought her epiphanies. And here's Raj. And Raj, obviously a Sikh, and he says, my object is my hair. And every time I see it, and every time I wrap my turban around it, it reminds me of the gratitude I owe to the creator who made my form. Well, you might say, yes, OK, you're picking fairly normal religious people. You would, wouldn't you? You're not going to talk to the fanatics, and they're not going to talk to you. You're not going to be talking to the extremists. And it's a fair point. So, a survey can help. The survey was carried out in January of this year. YouGov, the survey company, did it for us. When I say us, it's Bernard and myself again, and we're involved in something called the Westminster Faith Debates. And if you want the data, 
the actual data and the survey questions. Just Google faith debates and you can get them. So this survey is fully representative of the adult population of Great Britain. Actually, we didn't set out to use the survey to prove that religious people are normal, not a bit of it. We're just trying to find out the broad range of beliefs and values that people in this country or people hold. And we asked a set of questions about religious beliefs or secular beliefs, but also about personal morality. Not politics, not economics, personal morality. And the most amazing thing that comes out of the results is that most of us have rather similar opinions about personal morality. We think similarly about things like abortion and euthanasia, same-sex marriage. There's a majority opinion on all of those things. And we agree on some basic principles that inform us, like the dignity of the person, freedom of each one of us, equality. But also what stood out is that there is what I've come to call a moral minority. There are dissenters from those common views. How many? The dissenters, the moral minority, are 8.5% of the population. But when people think about odd religious people, they're thinking of something in addition. They're thinking of people who believe strange religious things, not just their values. Now again, the survey told us that of that moral minority group, nothing much predicts it. They're all ages, they're all political parties, male and female, but there is one subgroup, and they're distinguished by two features, both of them. First of all, they believe in God with great certainty. Okay? I ask people, I've always wanted to do this, not do you believe in God, don't you believe in God? I ask them, it's this lovely long scale. Are you absolutely certain there's a God? Do you believe in God, mostly? Do you sometimes believe in God? Do you think it's quite likely there's a God? Quite likely there isn't. You're a definite atheist. Well, the absolutely certain people, that's one, that's one aspect of being what I'm calling here the God-fearer. And the other aspect is, most of us, when we're asked what guides you in life, we say we make up our own minds, our own judgment. The God-fearers say, I rely on what God tells me, or scripture tells me, or religious teachings tell me. To put those things together, you're still with me, believing in God, and uh, the, second, the second factor about judgment, and that's the God-fearers. Okay, so now we're getting somewhere. But not all God-fearers are in the moral minority, and not all of the moral minority are God-fearers. <coughs> so, my statistic. The people we have in mind when we say religious people aren't normal, not like us, the God-fearing moral minority are 3.6% of the population of Great Britain. Now, let me be very clear. I'm not saying there's anything odd, abnormal about these people. I'm saying they dissent from the majority view. They are outliers. I know quite a lot of God-fearing moral majority people. I think their views are important. I think we need dissent in our society. I think they have a very important contribution. But I object when they claim that they're the only true religious people. And I object when religious leaders tell us that all religious people hold those minority views. And I object when anti-religious people use and skew this to say those few represent where most of us are. So, if any of you hear those views, I really hope that you'll remember this discovery made at Lancaster University and you'll tell them, hang on a minute, the God-fearing moral minority are only 3.6% of the population. Thank you.